Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the delayed FX Market Insight for Wednesday, the 24th of April. All right, we're right into the Asian session and we haven't got long before the key Aussie CPI data. So I'll just bang this out pretty quickly. Now, what we've seen over the last 24 hours is the US dollar finally kicking into gear. Okay, we've had some strong housing numbers. There's just a positive uh, vibe across um, the US economy over the last, the data over the last, you know, from last end of last week through to the early this week, the uh, showing signs of uh, resilience and strength. So just coming down to, first of all, the market conditions. Okay, we've got good trending markets. Okay, number one, core market drivers. Well, you know what? The US dollar is shining despite the China US situation and also Brexit. There has been some news out just recently where Trump is getting together all the officials next week with the Chinese officials to discuss everything. We should hopefully have more information then. But look at the technical outlook for the major pairs. Now, the dollar index uh, kicking straight into gear with those strong housing numbers. Um, and uh, that also feeds in with, you know, the weaker bias on euros, sterling. Aussies now drifted back into the range despite those good employment numbers last week. And the Kiwi is already down there as well. And you've got dollar CAD and dollar Swiss. Pretty much all the dollar pairs, this is almost perfect. Okay, dollar yen, it's still up there, but it's just drifting sideways. So these pairs up, these pairs down, that's where you get the good trending markets, right? This is a good time to be trading and to look for opportunities. Now, when we come into um, the key data, obviously the Aussie CPI data, number one, this is the most important data release for the Aussie dollar. Now, we had that contradictory, sort of slightly better employment numbers last week. Didn't really do a lot, but... This, there's a, it's under a lot of pressure at the moment and the dollar strength is pushing through. So if we get weak numbers here, that's probably the best trade. Bear in mind, as early as next week, we'll probably have some more information about the US-China trade issues and that may push the Aussie anywhere. But short term, we do have a potential opportunity. The German IFO numbers, well, to me, historically, they are a really important number. Okay, obviously the German uh, economy being the biggest component of that Eurozone. So keep an eye on that. And the last major release for the day, the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. Now, dollar CAD is uh, shot to the top side, despite oil still being at 66 bucks. And this is all because they're, they're thinking the Bank of Canada is going to go neutral to dovish, okay, with their, their um, hiking sort of scenario or bias on interest rates. So we've got some big uh, releases. Uh, CPI pretty clear, okay. Um, now, let me just actually give you a, a bit of a look through a couple of different things. When I say pretty clear, it's one number, but the RBA, like a few of the central banks out there, if I can just get that to stop on that number there, what you'll have is, when, if you are looking to trade the RBA, now this is out in uh, just well, about 20 minutes, um, the, the market looks at these major numbers. These were the cool numbers, that the only ones that used to come out. Now we've got this RBA weighted mean and, and uh, trim mean. These numbers here are the conundrum that we have to work out what's going on. So really, there are two or three components here coming out. It's not as clear cut as it used to be. So what you're looking for is the sort of the core numbers to match up with the RBA numbers. Then we know that traders are doing the exact same thing. All right, so uh, Aussie under pressure, weak numbers really work, work well for us. Um, now let's just have a quick look at the charts before I finish up. Uh, we've been working vigorously to get this internet up and it's just come online. It's slow as a wet week, but we are working there. So you can see here, Aussie, I mean, trending lower. It's, it's banging around. Hasn't got enough momentum just at the moment to push through this last uh, support line, but the CPI number will work that out for us. The dollars, the US dollar is going up. So the best trade for us is these currencies going down. Kiwi is following suit. Dollar yen just sideways. And here's Euro Sterling. So the good thing is when you look at the major pairs and you see, say, Kiwi, Aussie, Euro and Sterling all go on the same way, I feel extremely confident and comfortable trading, uh, especially the data. All we need is the data to give it the direction. Um, you look at Dollar CAD. I mean, it, it, it's been all over the place. It's sort of trading sideways in a big range, but it's finally really broken loose and rallied 100 odd, 110 points yesterday. So despite oil down here. So the Bank of Canada interest rate decision, the key part to that, no change in rates expected. The statement and press conference is going to be loose as you like. So don't think trading the, um, uh, the Bank of Canada is going to be any uh, easy pickings, right? You may have some levels, but it's going to be pretty tough 
uh, to go by. To me, the trade of the day really, well, it actually may come down to the German IFA numbers because there's less pressure on that situation. But the Aussie CPI numbers, RBA, very worried about global growth and the current trend is down. This thing, weak numbers, it's got to go down, doesn't it? That's what I'm looking for. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll get this up as quick as I can and uh, we'll get into it. Cheerio.